And here we go. Great to be with you. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Uh, we're going to take you back to that live news conference in just a moment. But in case you're just tuning in, let me just set this up for you because you know his name, George Zimmerman, the, the self-styled neighborhood watchman who was acquitted in the murder of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin back in a courtroom today. And he just walked out uh, of this Seminole County courtroom not too long ago after being charged with felony aggravated assault for allegedly pointing a gun at his girlfriend. Here he is in court moments ago, uh, jail suit, cuffed, beard. I want to take you back to the news conference underway. You're going to be hearing from his attorneys. Well, a lot of times things are included in police reports that don't end up being true. Um, whether or not the sheriff has certain items and evidence is going to be developing over time. We have the same police report that you all have. We have no more greater knowledge of what the sheriff has in their evidence locker than what you do. So uh, as far as what the evidence is from the state has against him, that's yet to be determined. Did he possess an AR-15 and a shotgun? Well, the police report indicates that firearms were recovered. And uh, as far as that, we don't have any other further knowledge of that. Why yes, ma'am. Excuse me? Why can't you go to the elementary school on Sand Lake Road? The state attorney asked for a specific address to be included in the exclusionary zone. Exclusionary zone meaning he can't go to a certain place or within 1,500 feet of a certain place. As far as why the state attorney asked for that, um, I don't know. I, I can answer that. The alleged victim has a child. There's a child. Yep. I'm sorry? Something to do with his girlfriend's daughter? Yeah. Yes, that's why I just told oh, him. I'm sorry. Okay. Are okay. You okay. Keep donations? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. My name's Jeff Dowdy, J E F F uh, D O W D Y. I'm the chief of the Seminole County Public Defender's Office. My name is uh, Daniel Magaro. Last name is spelled M E G A R O, and I am an assistant public defender. Do you want to end this? Yeah. Okay. okay. I think Thank that's you. it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's get out of that. So, so you just heard the tail end of this news conference, but, but back to the news here. This is, this is what's happened. This is what you need to know before we have a bigger conversation. So police have now arrested George Zimmerman. They arrested him at this uh, Florida home of his girlfriend, Samantha Scheibe. That happened yesterday. So I want to play you some sound. First, this is a 911 call. This is from this, this woman, just to set the scene. He's in my house breaking on my because I asked him to leave. He has his freaking gun breaking all of my stuff right now. I'm doing this again? You just broke my glass table. You just broke my sunglasses and you put your gun in my freaking face and told me to get the f out because this is not your house. No, get out of here. So if you listen to that really, really closely, there is a man who can be heard in the background telling her to calm down. But then she tells the dispatcher that the man just pushed her out of the house, locked the door. So that was her 911 call. There is an entirely separate 911 call, a man believed to be George Zimmerman. And you will hear how he tells a dispatcher he is calling to, to quote him because I just want everyone to know the truth. Here it is. For lack of a better word, going crazy again. Just started smashing stuff, taking stuff that belonged to me, throwing it outside, throwing it out of her room throwing it all over the house. She broke a glass table because she threw something on it. When deputies arrived at that home, they pushed the door open, which, by the way, was blocked by several pieces of smaller furniture. They found George Zimmerman sitting there unarmed. Police say he was passive and cooperative. So we're going to have a bigger legal conversation about this in just a minute, but I want to go straight to the scene where you saw those attorneys to Sanford, Florida, and Alina Machado is there outside that, uh, that courtroom. And t t what happened? We know he will be released on bond, $9,000. What else did we learn today, Alina? Well, in addition to that $9,000 bond, Brooke, uh, the judge set certain restrictions as a condition of this bond, uh, including uh, Zimmerman cannot have any contact with the alleged victim in this case, case which is uh, Samantha Scheibe. He's also been uh, told that he has to stay away from two specific addresses. One is the location of this alleged incident, the home in Apopka, Florida, and then another home in Altamont Springs, Florida. Uh, Zimmerman is also uh, not supposed to have any weapons or ammunition in his possession, and he He's not supposed to travel outside of the state of Florida. And also, he's going to be uh, electronically monitored during his time outside while he's waiting for a trial. Now, uh, 
Zimmerman is again facing these uh, three charges, a felony and these two misdemeanors. Um, he asked specifically to go back to this house in Apopka, Florida, where he has some of his belongings. And uh, the judge said that he is not allowed to go back, not even with law enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. uh, if he wants to get those belongings outside of the house, uh, he's going to have to have a third party go back to that house to get them for him. Okay, Alina Machado Forrest in Florida. Alina, thank you. Let's talk about this, um, all the legalities. I want to bring in CNN senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin, also sitting alongside me here in Studio 7, criminal defense attorney Drew Finling, and former uh, federal prosecutor and defense attorney Tanya Miller here with me in Atlanta. So, Jeff Tubin, I, I want to go to you first, actually, because I believe your ears perked to precisely what, what mine did. When I heard the judge's voice at the very end, I wrote this down. When you hear that charge, battery by strangulation, that jumped out at me because that was news, correct? That was news, and what was also news was th the claim by prosecutors that the alleged victim in this case uh, claimed that there had been an additional domestic violence incident about a week earlier, the strangulation that you're, re that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. So this is why... Uh, when someone gets arrested, it's really just the beginning of the investigation. It's not the end. The question now will be, will the prosecution proceed to a trial with um, the, the event from yesterday as, as a felony charge and perhaps additional charges relating to what, what might have happened earlier? Or will they decide that none of this is worthy of charges? This is when an investigation begins. There's a lot to look into, and we'll see what happens. Okay, um, let me come back to you, but I want to go to both of you because something else that, that I was wondering, it's not often, you, we hear this 911 call that we just played partially, which is who we believe to be George Zimmerman. Um, and I'm just curious, it seems like he's very going on the record, hey, this is what happened. Um, is that odd to you? Yes. Him making a phone call? I think it is. I Why? mean, it, because it sounded to me like a CYA call, hmm. a cover your butt call. It served him so well in the trial against Trayvon Martin. He did not have to testify because he got all of that stuff out through that 911 call. I think what he's trying to do, again, is to put out his version without anybody really challenging it and to cover his butt. That's what I think. The other side could say he just maybe knows proper protocol. Yeah. I see you're rolling your eyes, and I know a lot of people probably are as well, but, you know, there are two sides to of every course. story. Drew Finley, your impressions. Well, my thoughts are, are that this has got to leave the prosecution from the original case second-guessing themselves. Um, a lot of people like myself were on the, your show many times saying, yeah. hey, racial profiling was Sanford police. That's a fact. But George Zimmerman is a private citizen, and what he had was a propensity for violence. He was a violent person that was gun-wielding. And now he's shown us once again who he really is, and it's got to leave the Monday morning quarterbacks, like myself, mm -hmm. saying, hey, prosecutors, you fell prey to going to what the publicity would bring you and the public wanted, not what would, would, have, would have won your case in court. Shame on you. Look what just happened. I you disagree. Why? I disagree with that, uh, respectfully, my friend Drew Finling, because I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. You know, I don't think with all the evidence that you had in that case that Trayvon Martin would have been suspicious, accosted, and confronted by... Uh, 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 George Zimmerman had he not been black. I think a lot of people believe that, the prosecutor believed that, and that's why they went that route. You add to that that this guy obviously has a problem with guns. He obviously has a sense of entitlement and superiority and probably anger management issues. That was a deadly but combination Tanya, you for know, Trayvon you know Martin as on a that season, night he was killed. You know as a seasoned former prosecutor, there is nothing as racial profiling that applies to private citizens. It doesn't. By definition, under law, you just go to the internet, racial profiling applies to law enforcement. Let he me... wasn't law enforcement. He was fascinated with violence. That's what the prosecution should have done in the Trayvon Martin case. And maybe... Shoulda, woulda, he... coulda. We're talking Absolutely. now. Hang on a second. Jeff Tubin, I want to get you in because speaking of guns, um, according to this, this girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, whatever she is, you know, he, she told police he pointed this shotgun directly at her. How do you prove that? Well, let's just take one, one fact uh, that can be determined. Was the gun in a case or not when the police went inside? If the gun is in a case, well, that would certainly suggest that Zimmerman was telling the truth, that he didn't. If the gun is out and perhaps ex easily accessible, that might support her Police story. reports We're, said they were locked up when they arrived. With, okay. Well, I, I, did they? Did, I have not seen the police That's report That's what the yet. report says. Says that the gun was locked up? Both guns. 
from what I well, read that, in RCN that, and Wire. Yes, indeed. That may uh, that that may well support his story. Again, there's a lot more to investigate. Did anyone else see anything? Did anyone else hear anything? These are there are there neighbors who saw or heard anything? Mm -hmm. These are very important facts that that you know a thorough investigation presumably will reveal. And certainly, there's been no time for that yet. Okay. Uh, we are not finished with this. I'm sure we will see what happens as he is to be released on that $9,000 uh, bond. Jeff Tubin, my thanks to you, and Drew Finling and Tanya Miller, thanks to both of you here as well. Coming up, what a story out of Virginia.